Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone um, for coming today and listening uh, to the presentation that Karen Stallman from the SAU School of Medicine has on the Farm Family Resource Initiative. We're really excited to have her with Illinois AgriWomen today. Um, and thank you for your time to let us know about your program. And I'll turn it over to Karen. All right, thank you, Jill. And then um, Gail, will I be able to share my screen or? Yeah, so I'll need to uh, be a co-host, which I guess I didn't leave myself as one. Are you able to do that for me, Gail? There you go, you can go. Okay. Okay, afternoon, everybody. Can you see that? Um, slide can you see the slide jill looks good it says says siu school of medicine i'm going to advance one to make sure that it's yes. advancing on your end yes it it okay very good well good afternoon everybody and thank you jill and gail for uh giving us some time on the on your uh program this this afternoon i keep saying morning because it's been a crazy morning so i think it is still morning so I'm Karen Stallman, and I am an Ag Resource Specialist with the SIU School of Medicine. And just let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a double alum uh, with the SIU Carbondale College of Agriculture. I've worked in higher education for 35 years and now am working as an Ag Resource Specialist for the School of Medicine. Uh, my husband and I farm in Randolph County which is about halfway between um, St. Louis and Carbondale. We're right on the uh, Mississippi River, a little over an hour south of St. Louis. Also presenting with me today is Lynn Weiss, and she is new to our team. Lynn is what we call a community health worker, and you'll hear a little bit more from Lynn a little bit later on. But Lynn, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Hi, thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, the unmute button seems to always elude me for some reason, but um, as Karen indicated, I'm Lynn Weiss. I have been working with uh, Karen on this project um, with a grant for about six weeks now. So yes, I am relatively new and I'm still in learning mode. So if I don't have the answers, I will go find them for you. Um, I am actually... Um, living in rural Illinois. And hello, Ruth, to you too. Um, I am about 30 miles east of St. Louis. I worked with the extension service for 30 years in administration and as a youth development um, employee. So my background is of such. So I've lived in the farming community, grew up with my extended family being involved with it. Um, and my husband's family as well. So it's very dear to my heart and so are the community people that we work with. So I appreciate you all letting us be here today. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. What I'd like to do is just go around the room quickly and do some quick introductions. So Lynn and I have an idea of who's in the audience. Maybe if you could just share your name and your connection to agriculture and where you're at. And I'll, I'll tell you right up front, if it looks like I look away from the screen, it's because I have two monitors at home. So I look at a laptop that is where my camera is. And then I look away from my laptop to look at my large monitor. Um, to uh, see everybody that's on the screen. So let's just do some quick introductions and I'll go right down the row and just um, call names as I see them. So the next window I see is Jill. Hi, um, I'm Jill Beal. I am the Southern Region Director for Illinois AgriWomen. I am also a uh, St. Clair County Ag in the Classroom Coordinator. I live in Belleville, and um, I'm also an SAU alum. <laughs> so uh, that's it. 
Great, thank you. And next I see Gail. Yeah, that mute button, I tell you. Uh, Gail Baker, um, I am a Illinois Agri Women member and I help do a lot of the website and social media stuff. Um, I'm an ag engineer. I work for Mauer Stutz out of Peoria, Illinois, uh, working mostly with livestock facilities. And um, yeah, that's, that's me. Great, and the next is Lori. Hi, I'm Lori Stahl. I am um, a member of Illinois Agro Women, and um, I am the Assistant Dean for Virtual and Performing Arts Education and Sciences at Waubonsee Community College. And I come to agriculture, grew up in Chicago, really, you know, thinking food came, you know, saran wrapped out of the uh, grocery store, not really understanding food. And um, when I went to college in Texas, my girlfriend was raised on a farm and, and majored in agriculture and became a assistant deputy secretary of ag. And she would absolutely not leave me alone until I understood ag. And she lived with me, so we had to grow a garden. And after that, I was hooked and I really learned the importance of knowing about our food sources, how vital they are to us to have, you know, a great future and healthy population. And so after that, I've always tried to be very supportive of ag in any way I possibly can. Great, thank you. Now, Jill, I'm gonna have to turn it over to you to continue down the screen because I can't get the others to pull up. So can you help me with that, please? Who's, who do you see beyond Lori? Um, I see Ruth Hamilton okay. will be next. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am a member of Illinois Agri Women, uh, the American Agri Women. I'm on the Education Committee. I have a program called Annie's Project Education for Farm Women, of which I serve as the secretary, or excuse me, the treasurer of that organization now. Uh, I am an SIU alum and soon to retire farm management instructor with that organization again. Hi, everyone. Hello, Ruth. Good to see you. And um, I, the next one I see is Andrea. Is it Coring? I'm bad really with pronunciation. I'm sorry. You got it close enough. I'm Andrea Coring. I just joined Illinois Agri Women. I work for Precision Conservation Management, which is spearheaded by Illinois Corn Growers and Illinois Soybean Association. I cover five counties in the Southwest region, Madison, Monroe, St. Clair, Clinton, and Washington counties. I reside in Randolph County outside of Redbud, and I fill the gaps on the family farm as well. Okay, great. You're just north of me today. Um, next, I have Brittany McCorkle. Hi, I'm Brittany. I work for ADM as an origination specialist. Um, my territories are Morris, Ottawa, and Mendota, but um, reside in Morris, Illinois. Um, I come from a farm background, um, alumni from Illinois State, where I majored in ag business. And I actually just joined today, paid my membership dues. Hey, we're glad to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Um, let's see, Jessica Snyder. Uh, hi, I'm Jessica. Um, I actually work as an ag lender for Compere Financial in uh, Northern Illinois, so Rock Falls and Oregon. Um, I reside with my fiance in DeKalb County. Um, I'm also from an ag background. Uh, my family farms. Um, as well as the family I'm marrying into. So kind of all around me. Um, I went to Illinois State and I majored in agronomy and ag business. Good. Let's see, um, Kelly Martin, did we do Kelly? Hello, um, yeah, I'm Kelly Martin. I currently live in the Quad Cities and I am the VP of advocacy for the Illinois Agro Women. And I work at John Deere. I'm a test engineer for combines, um, working on automation. Okay. Uh, Christina Jacobs. Good afternoon, everybody. Christina Jacobs. I am the president of IARC, 
um, which is the 501c for um, Illinois agri women. I also manage um, Oldham Farms. We are a row crop, about 3,500 acres. We raise corn, soybeans, and we grow seed for pioneer. Okay, great. Um, let's see, Martha Bloom. Hi, this is Martha. I am a IAW member and also a reporter for the Illinois Agri News. Very good. Is that it? I didn't hear you, Jill. And Jill, I think you might be muted. Okay, let's try again. The last one I see is Natalie Schmidt. Hi, everybody here. I'll start my video too. Hello, hi. Um, I am Natalie Schmidt and I am from Ottawa, Illinois. Although right now I'm in Rochester, Minnesota with my husband and our grandson uh, visiting. Um, I am membership chair for Illinois Agri Women. And um, on my husband's family farm, we farm corn and soybeans in LaSalle County. And I'm really happy to be here today and listening in. Thank you. Is that everybody? Have we missed anyone? Uh, that I think that looks like everyone. I don't know unless anybody else wants to come forward. Okay, well, thank you. And thank you all for taking time to do that. That gives Lynn and I an idea of who is here. And you are all going to be able to relate to what we talk about today. So if you have questions as we go along, we're going to allow time at the end for questions. But if you have something you want to post in the chat box, that's fine too. Okay, did my slide advance that you're looking at the Center for Rural Health and Social Service Development? Okay, so Lynn and I work for the SIU School of Medicine, and we work out of the SIU Carbondale campus at the Center for Rural Health and Social Service Development. And I heard a few Salukis on there, and of course, Lynn's a Saluki and so am I. And uh, the Center for Rural Health and Social Service Development is located in Wheeler Hall, if any of you remember where Wheeler Hall is on campus. So today we're going to talk about the Farm Family Resource Initiative. And the Farm Family Resource Initiative started in December of 2019. And you can see who our funders are here, the Illinois, the state of Illinois and the Illinois Department of Agriculture. So Senator Scott Bennett, who is the senator in the 52nd Senate District here in Illinois, successfully secured funding for this initiative in the last four legislation, legislative sessions. And of course, you all know the, the governor just signed our um, budget, and we again were funded um, this round. So we started the Farm Family Resource Initiative in some pilot counties. So in December of 2019, when it kicked off, we kicked off in Morgan, Sangamon, Macoupin, Christian, Logan, and Macon counties, right there in the center of Illinois. So July 1st of 2021, we were able to increase, thanks to Senator Bennett and our state appropriation, to expand to the southern 66 counties. And you can see on this map, uh, highlighted in the purple, the southern 66 counties is the service region for the SIU School of Medicine. So the School of Medicine is centered out of Springfield, Illinois, and uh, has locations in different regions within those 66 counties. And then this past September, thanks to the Illinois Department of Agriculture and Director Jerry Costello and uh, USDA funding that was secured through the Illinois Department of Agriculture, we were able to expand the Farm Family Resource Initiative to all 102 counties. So right now we're able to serve all counties in the state of Illinois. So the Farm Family Resource Initiative really began with Senator Bennett's vision of needing to help Illinois farm families with farm stress issues, with mental health issues, with 
improving the health of farm families, not just mentally and also physically. So some of the overarching objectives is that FFRI seeks to improve the health and well-being of Illinois farm owners and families by one, identifying farm family needs, including mental health needs, pulling together resources for farm families, creating new resources for farm families, and developing a network of partners, both professional and otherwise, to respond to farm family needs. So we have an advisory council made up of ag industry professionals from throughout the state, and we meet monthly. And the ag advisory council are made up of people just like ag industry people that you would imagine, Farm Bureau, Farm Credit, um, other, a, a, other ag industry agencies, Department of Ag. So we come together monthly and the advisory council ro role is to provide guidance, to provide support for our efforts, make recommendations, and then carry out efforts. So when we began in the six pilot counties, we started by doing a needs assessment. So we surveyed live between April of 2020 and September of 2020 in the pilot counties. Didn't get a lot of response, but the responses we got provided us with some very valuable information. 64% of the people who responded, and remember these are farm families within the um, pilot counties, said farm-related stress and mental health are significant problems. At that time, market prices for crops and livestock was among the highest concerns. And if a producer was stressed, they indicated they would go to a physician, another family member, a faith leader before they would see a therapist. So that was kind of our needs assessment, assessment information on what we found out. So what do we know? The American Farm Bureau Federation conducted a survey not long ago, found that 61% of farmers and farm workers said they experienced more stress and mental health challenges in 2021 than they did in 2020. New NIH research indicates that farmers also have an elevated risk of suicide to boot. And Many of you are involved in agriculture, so uh, all of you are, have some connection to agriculture. So I'm sure none of this information comes as any surprise. And many of us can think of um, suicide events that have happened in the agriculture community. I wanna mention something about the picture that I chose here. So I chose a, a picture of a farmer pointing to some round bales and that always strikes home with me because as I was growing up on the farm, we did a lot of hay baling. And we, at that time, did not bale round bales. We were baling straw, uh, square bales and we sold a lot of hay. And I can remember times whenever my father was so stressed because we would have bales of hay out in the field ready to be sold and it would rain. Sometimes that cloud just hung over that field, I think. So I can remember being very young and seeing all the stress related, not to only all the other farm issues, but particularly in the summer when we dealt with all the hay uh, that my dad bailed and that we loaded and how stressful that was every time that we needed to cut hay or that we did cut hay. So that, uh, picture is always interesting to me. I think it just points out some of the stressors. And of course, all of you can think of uh, stressful times too. The agrarian imperative impels farmers to hang on to their land at all costs. The agrarian imperative instills farmers to work incredibly hard, to endure unusual pain and hardship, and to take uncommon risk. So if you're not familiar with the agrarian imperative, it's a study that Dr. Roseman did in 2010. And I think this is so accurate. And with those of you that are actually in the farming business, which it sounds like many of you are, I think we all can relate to that. When I think back to my dad, when I think of what my husband uh, is involved in now, I think about how hard those farmers work. 
and unusual pain and hardship. You know, you can think of injuries, but you can just think of, of how hard people work and to take uncommon risks. I can't believe that I grew up on a farm with, uh, there were seven of us kids and uh, that none of us ever got seriously hurt because uncommon risk, yes, we certainly took a lot of risk. So you all are familiar with farm stressors and what they are, financial concerns, personal or family concerns, work-related injuries, changes in farm policy that's happening all the time, loss of crop or livestock, weather, like right now, uh, where we are in Randolph County, my husband hasn't been able to do anything. In fact, I talked to him uh, just before I got on this call, on this Zoom meeting, and he said he was going to work on fence this afternoon because he didn't have anything else that he could do. Right now, he'd be planting corn uh, and working on fence in the winter months, but uh, weather is such a farm stressor. Markets, you know, right now markets are so good and commodities are so high. Corn got above $8 this week. And I had a guy earlier this week that I was on a call with that said, wow, are you, you know, are you getting any business right now? He's like, farm prices are so good. Why would anybody be stressed? Well, yeah, farm prices are good. But then I think he wasn't sitting in the living room with me last week whenever my husband opened his fertilizer bill and about fell off the couch. So there's a lot of stressors that are related to markets, regardless of whether or not they are good. And then a big issue is farm succession. Um, the average age of a farmer is 60. A lot of farmers are facing who do they um, leave the farm to? Who's going to take care of things whenever they're um, finished or whenever they pass on or whenever they decide um, they're old enough that they can't farm anymore? My husband is 72 and we're in the same spot. We don't have anybody in our family who is going to take over the family farm. And that's a real, real tough spot to be in. And there's so many people in that situation. So in red, I put on a farm, there is no more valuable asset than the farmer. And I think you all can agree. If the farmer gets hurt, if the farmer isn't there, what happens to the farm? And I often say the farmer takes care of their livestock. The farmer takes care of their crops. The, the farmer takes care of the equipment. Um, but oftentimes those farmers don't take care of themselves. And so that's part of what the Farm Family Resource Initiative is about, is helping farmers and farm families um, to take care of themselves. So one of the first things that we did was we created a FFRI website. If you get a chance to look at it, we put webinars on our website. We have all kinds of resources on our website. We do a monthly blog on the website. So it's filled with information and it is continually evolving. We're putting stuff on the website almost every day. Um, if one of you look at the website and you see a resource that we've missed, which certainly there are plenty of them out there. So um, if you see something that needs to be added to the uh, website, if you know a good blog or a good video or something, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me and recommend that. We've got a School of Medicine marketing team that we work with uh, strictly devoted to Farm Family Resource Initiative efforts. And the website is one thing that we keep trying to build. So one of the things that I consider to kind of be a centerpiece of what we've done is we have a 24 seven anonymous confidential farm helpline. So Memorial Behavioral Health in Springfield has a call center that answers, answers calls for the suicide lifeline. So within that call center, we have a designated Farm Family Resource in Initiative line. So you can call the farm helpline. You can text the farm helpline. We now have an email option where you can email the helpline. So let me again tell you, it is 24 seven. So if I am disking and I finish on Saturday night and I need somebody to talk to, if I call this helpline, I'm going to talk with either a bachelor or master's level mental health professional. They're going to be able to provide me with 
cri brief crisis intervention. They are going to be able to provide me with some resources, whatever help that I need. And, you know, we're, we use the tagline that we all need someone we can talk to. Sometimes the person on the other end of that line is just somebody that is there to listen. That if you need somebody to talk to, that person um, on the other end of that phone line can be somebody that you can talk to at any hour. And we get a variety of calls. Nothing is too simple. Nothing is too complicated. Nothing is out of line. We encourage people to call the helpline. And there's no charge and you can remain anonymous. As part of the protocol, the call center folks do ask if you'd like to give your name. If you say no, you continue on with the conversation. It's strictly confidential, it's strictly anonymous. One of the um, additions to the helpline that we were able to add this year, thanks to our grant funding, is follow-up counseling sessions for callers who need additional support. So if I call in as the spouse of a farmer, and I talk to someone at the call center and I decide that I need more help and I'd like to maybe get some counseling. Through the SIU School of Medicine, their counselors are able to provide you with up to six free counseling sessions. So as the call progresses and I uh, offer that I'd like to have some additional counseling, I might also say, um, you know, I think I could use some couples counseling. Is this something that my husband and I could uh, access? Yes, that can certainly be done. Couples counseling can be uh, done with the six counseling sessions. Now, what if I decide that my whole family, well, you know, it really should be my, me, my kids, and my husband. Could we take advantage of group counseling? And the answer to that is yes. So there are up to six counseling sessions with the SIU School of Medicine counselors that can be offered to you at no charge. But the other piece of this is that it's all done over telehealth, a telehealth system, which basically is a computer. So just like you and I are visiting now, we could be having a telecounseling session with that mental health professional at the SIU School of Medicine. So I'd never have to leave the home as long as I have access to a computer and a good connection, then I'm able to take advantage of that uh, telehealth counseling. That's new. That's something that we're just introducing and just starting to market. So we're hoping uh, we can get the word out and get people to take advantage of that. One of the ways that we promote what we're doing is that we distribute wallet cards. And a wallet card is just, this is the front and back of it. It's really just the size of a little business card. I hope some of you have seen these because we sent them to every Farm Bureau office, every FSA office, some farm credit offices have them, some others places have them. And we did the wallet card so a person could discreetly pick up a wallet card, stick that in their purse, stick that in their wallet. So there again, if it's Sunday morning and I think I've had it, I, I just need somebody to talk to. I could pull out that wallet card and I could call or I could text or I could email the helpline. So I'm hoping some of you have seen those wallet cards. We also developed a resource guide that has national, state, and county resources to be used by our helpline staff and others. It, there again, it's a working document. It's listed as resources on our website. You might find some of those beneficial. And again, as you know others, I would encourage you to forward those to me. Some of the things we've also done is some ag industry professional develop. And I know one of you introduced yourself as being with ADM. So we've done, um, professional development with ADM staff. I think we trained about 85 ADM uh, people. Farm Credit is just getting ready to go through some professional development. Farm Bureau managers have, um, some extension people have. If you can see this little, look kind of small on this screen, it's a flyer that talks about what the professional development is. It's really a webinar series that we do over Zoom. 
So we start out by doing an introduction to helping skills. How can you help? If you see someone is struggling, how to recognize signs of psychological distress? How can you tell if somebody's really struggling? How could you tell if somebody was suicidal? And then how can you encourage someone to get help? And that's one of our SIU School of, Fac School of, Members, School of Medicine faculty members that pre presents that professional development opportunity. We also have a nurse scholar program, and that's in conjunction with AgriSafe, the AgriSafe Network, and Farm Credit Illinois. And that's an opportunity for nurses, nurse practitioners, any, but anyone in the medical profession above the LPN level to get 20 hours of continuing nursing education online, on demand. And the nurse scholar program um, has a fee. But thanks to Farm Credit Illinois, we're able to have nurses go through the program. And then once they complete it, uh, they have, we have a scholarship to where it doesn't end up costing them anything. And this kind of tells you what they do. Uh, like I said, it's online, it's on demand. They get 20 hours of continuing nursing education. And it all addresses health and safety issues that are unique to agricultural workers and their families. It's really targeted. Um, for nurses and um, health professionals, healthcare professionals in rural areas. We also have online modules for healthcare professionals. Wow, and this flyer even looks smaller than that last one. So these are continuing medication, medical education credits. And here we have three uh, professionals talking about uh, situations in the ag community, agriculture trauma, aging on the farm, um, unique stressors of agriculture. Anyone can take these online modules. If you're a healthcare professional, you get uh, continuing medication, medical education credits. If you just want to view the modules and not get the credits, that's fine too. They're very educational. I listened, uh, participated in each of the sessions and learned so much. So Lynn introduced herself earlier and I'm gonna let Lynn now go through a few slides. J Lynn, just tell me when you're ready to advance to the next slide, okay? I will do that. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, as we had indicated, I'm Lynn Weiss. I'm the community health worker for the FFRI. Um, there's my information. Um, appreciate anybody that'd be interested in following up after I give you um, some details about part of the program that I'm responsible for. Um, one of the uh, deliverables, as they call them, that we have for our grant is to do some community education. And that had been addressing mental health of rural youth. And the audience that I will be working with will be the adults that work with youth. So if you think about our 4-H leaders, et cetera, um, that would be, those are the type of people that we would be thinking about. Um, I just completed my certification. Um, some of you may have heard of the Mental Health First Aid. It is a program that we will be doing community uh, outreach sessions with to again, provide those adults with some of the tools and training to understand and respond to some of the stresses that our young people are facing. And one of the things that um, I continue to think in the back of my head, we've known that our rural youth have had a higher incidence of alcohol and tobacco use or misuse, but with some of the other illicit drugs, that number is creeping up as well. And again, Karen mentioned some of the, um, the news articles, we know people within our community that we've seen some of our young people that have had some challenges, and this is one way of being able to address that. Now, as a participant or someone that becomes involved with the mental health first aid uh, program, it's like being the first aid person. It doesn't mean that you diagnose. We don't um, counsel the people. Basically, we're the eyes and ears of looking and seeing um, if we think that there is some child or youth that is um, in, in some distress. 
one of the things that we do during the trainings is that we offer a practical inter intervention. And that seems to be one of the, the core values of the program. A lot of times people um, recognize the situation, but aren't sure what to do. And this training provides that background for you to have a plan in place. It works great for that. It also provides you with not only national, but local resources that are available um, for those families and for those youth that may have some mental challenges. If you'll go ahead and turn the next, thank you. So who are the people that uh, should be taking mental health first aid? There's parents, teachers, I basically say those adults in our communities that are working with our youth people, um, youth center staff, youth group leaders, first responders, we're ones that not only in our professional life, but a lot of times we're volunteering. We're the ones that are seeing these youth that are going through some of the difficulties. And this is one opportunity for us to be able to um, encourage them to seek some help. If you go to the next slide, uh, becoming a mental health first aider. There, and this is surprising to me, I did not realize there was two and a half million people that have been trained in the United States. And actually the program started in Australia. So it's in about 27 other count, uh, countries. So um, America, USA is working on this and uh, diligently trained to provide this information to farm families and rural um, youth. The curriculum is peer reviewed, so we know that there is good statistical information that's behind that, but it's really blended with a lot of practical, useful information. And that seems to be, again, one of those important key factors when we're working with a farming community. They want something that is down to earth, quick and easy, um, that's applicable. And that is part of the whole program. And as I had indicated before, it provides an action plan. Again, I think everybody wants to help their neighbors or their friends. You just never know how to actually approach, this, uh, approach the topic. And this training provides that opportunity to kind of lay that plan out and feel comfortable. The other thing it does is it gives you resources, people that you can call if you're in this situation. What do I need to do? Um, and as I said, we don't step over the boundaries. This is completely volunteer as far as anybody that you approach. It's not like you know, us telling them we're not mandated to do anything. So um, it's a good community resource. Um, the trainings that we're going to be doing in our communities um, start out with some online training followed by an in-person workshop. And the materials and trainings um, have been underwritten by the grant. So we're looking forward over the next couple of months and in future to be able to, order, um, to offer those throughout the state. Okay. Right. Th yes. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. So we've talked a lot about what we're doing. So I'm going to just take a couple slides here to talk about what you could do. So if any of you are interested, here's some ways that you could be involved in helping to promote FFRI. You know, I talked about the wallet cards. There's wallet card stands. If you have some place where you have a counter that somebody that you have farm traffic, rural tra traffic come in, you might be interested in putting that out on your counter at events that you all attend or you're all involved in. You might want to hand out materials, an ad or an article in the local paper. If you think that um, your local paper would like to put an ad or an article in about FFRI and you're in a rural community, you could let us know that. If any of you are involved in your county fair and you think that um, you're willing to hand out materials or you're at a booth or an exhibit where they hand out materials and you'd like to have handouts, we could provide that. If any of you are involved in annual meetings, 
uh, Farm Bureau, different ones that have annual meetings. We've got table tents that you could put out at a tent. If you all are involved in your uh, some kind of a board meeting and or a committee meeting uh, that you'd like to have some handouts. Um, winter meetings, there's always lots of meetings during the winter where ag people come together. And then some other things, um, guest blogs or articles. If we do um, guest blogs where we have people that have different expertise and we put those on our website, um, digital ads, we're getting ready to do a digital ad from a nurse that went through the nurse scholar program. Um, we've had farmers do digital ads. Maybe that's something you'd be interested in. We've had a couple people willing to do um, video spots and our marketing people have connected with them. So there's lots of things that might come to mind. I always mention who our School of Medicine team members are. And then this is my contact information. And of course, Jill and Gail also have my contact information. I'm gonna play just, um, if I can get it to work, a short video. Unfortunately, we don't have sound. Um, that's okay. okay. Okay, that was a very brief video that just talks about our helpline. Sorry that I couldn't get that to work. So we've talked about a lot, Lynn and I have. So let me pause and answer any questions that you all have. Anybody have any questions or any suggestions or comments that Lynn and I could respond to? Hi, Karen, this is Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Um, is there a network of people out there who, when we're holding our Annie's Project classes that we can easily connect, uh, let that facilitator know that there is a counselor or someone who could tell them about this program and bring them into the Annie's Project circle? Thank you, Ruth. That's really a good question. So I'll share with you that I just went and talked to the Annie's Project group that met in Jackson County at the Jackson County Extension Office. So I would be the contact for that. And then we would schedule somebody uh, to be able to do a presentation. I provided them with some materials and just did a brief introduction to FFRI for those folks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Other questions? So that's something else I should mention. You know how difficult it is to let others know about what you're doing. And we've got a lot of valuable resources. Uh, there just is a need to increase awareness. So if you get Farm Week, you see that we do a lot of advertising in Farm Week. Illinois Agri-News, you've got a representative here. Um, uh, in last week's Agri News, Adrian DeSutter talked about um, the Farm Family Resource Initiative. So if any of you have some place that you'd like to have a presentation, if you'd like to have just materials, um, we can provide any of that. Uh, if you want to do a radio interview, um, a newspaper interview, we do a lot of those sorts of things. So if something spurred your interest today, just please reach out to me. And um, we can certainly make that happen if you'd like to have somebody come do a presentation. I went back to my contact slide so you would have that. So just shoot us an email or uh, give us a call and we uh, are more than happy to go out and present to others. We really wanna get the word out about what we're doing. Any other questions? Well, we really appreciate your time and an opportunity to be able to do this. I know everybody is so busy. It's hard to commit even an hour uh, out of your time during the day. So I appreciate that you are willing to join in. And thank you so much, Jill, for the invite. Thank you, Karen. I think you provided a lot of information. Um, and at least we can get that information. If we hear something, we can refer them to your program. So um, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it.
Thank you. And if you need to contact Lynn about mental health first aid training, you can certainly uh, reach out to me and I can forward that information to Lynn. Great. Thank you everyone for attending today. We both appreciate it.